So the next piece here is actually seeing myself do the titration. So we will shift over to that and um, go to a video of doing a titration in our lab. Pay attention to that because that's kind of the same stuff that I expect you to be able to do when it comes down to doing the titrations in lab and the titrations for your titration practical. Okay, so we'll switch over to that now. Okay, so um, first step is to make sure that this is um, full of volume. So you take a waste container and run a little bit through there. Now this is all waste that can get dumped. And as we do our titration now, um, you want to read the volume off of your burette as precisely as you can. So again, probably using some sort of background so you get a good reading. I get 3 point, uh, that's 8.5. So 3.85 is my value. Uh, can someone write that down for us? 3.85 milliliters. Shana, you got it? Okay. Got it back here too, John. Okay, so 3.85 milliliters was my starting volume. And then now I need to put my titrant in here or my unknown. So our unknown is some sort of hydrochloric acid. So if you look, we have some sort of hydrochloric acid unknown to it. Uh, we don't know what the concentration is. And we're going to put as much of this in here as we need to do our experiment. And in this case, we're going to use 25 milliliters. Which is convenient because we have a nice 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. So 25 milliliters in here. Okay. So if we take a look at that and we read the volume off of this now, I'm not quite at 25. I'd say I'm at 20. 4.90. Okay, so you can write that down. 24.90 is my volume. Do you need to spend a ton of time getting exactly 25? No. no. 24.90. Just write that down because then you can use that in your math. This now goes into here. And we now have our unknown acid in our flask. Okay? And now I'm ready to start the titration. The number one thing you have to do is add the phenothaline, okay? If you don't add the phenothaline, you won't get a color change. So nothing happens. Now phenothaline, if we add that, a couple drops is all you need, it stays clear when you are in an acidic solution. It turns pink in a basic solution. So it should start off clear for us um, tomorrow. And then, white piece of paper. You need a white piece of paper underneath your Flask, that way you can see the color change. And then we're going to start adding in our base. So in the burette, we have 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, So we can record that. Our concentration in the burette is 0.25 molar. The concentration of the acid, we have no clue. Um, we use 24.9 milliliters of acid. And now we're going to figure out how much base does it take to neutralize it, or basically get to that pH of 7. So you can start off, again, you want to swirl and open this up. You'll notice how you get kind of a pink color, and as you swirl, it'll go away. And notice how I'm first, I'm kind of dispensing, you know, squirts at a time a little bit. And I really don't know the concentration of this. I made it up this morning, and I just kind of dumped things together. So... You know you're getting close when after you do a little squirt, the pink doesn't go away as fast. So notice how when I do this now, it takes a little bit longer for the pink to go away. Okay, I'm at 16 milliliters now, so I've dispensed about 12. Okay. Well, that took a long time to go away, didn't it? Okay, so I'm really close right now. Now, if you wanted to, you could do another squirt, take a reading, and say, okay, that one I may overshoot it, and say, okay, I overshot it, no big deal. Then you can just redo this test and get a more precise one, have an idea how much we're going to squirt. But I'm down to almost 18 now. So what, we had 3 to 18, so close to 15 milliliters is it's going to be kind of close to that. So I'm going to adjust, though, and if you're careful, 
you can adjust this. So it literally comes out one drop at a time. Now I put one drop in, now I have another drop hanging from this. Okay, so one drop didn't quite do it. Got a hanging drop hanging there. Believe it or not, it's actually running right now. If I wait long enough, it'll slowly drop that drop out. So there's no drop right there. Okay, I put two drops in, and I swirl. So what, that was three drops off of my last time I stopped it? Okay. And I actually have a little bit on the side of my beaker, too. I need to get that in. Okay. So is this literally dropping the base? Yes. So right now we are dropping the base. <laughs> Get it? Uh, I've been waiting all year to do that, right there. <laughs> Drop the base, right there. So that's a titration. You've been wondering what that poster is for all year long? Yes, that's our that's drop the base. Ask my TAs. They want it on the ceiling. I don't know. They thought it was hilarious this morning. I told them I was going to do that. They're like, like, are you going to do it today? I'm like, yep. They're like, all right, drop the base day. So I thought that was hilarious. Now, did I overshoot a little bit? A little bit. Maybe by a drop. Okay. So if you look, I was not quite 18, and my final volume now is 17.90, I would say. So final volume is 17.90. My initial volume was what? No. 3.85. Okay. So I would say I'm pretty good. I would say that that's a pretty good trial in terms of what I did. Um, I might be a drop or two over. Okay. Uh, each drop is about a tenth of a milliliter, about a twentieth of a milliliter someplace in there. Now you can't just randomly subtract that away. Okay. So if you wanted to redo it, you would take this out, fill this back up again. Um, if I'm at 18 here, do I need to refill this part? No. No, because it goes down to 50. So I could pour out... You know, this is about 15 milliliters, so I have, I definitely could redo at least one more time before I refill my burette, okay? So we could do that one more time and see what I get um, in terms of it. For time reasons, we're not going to do that. Now, tomorrow, you guys are going to run this at least three times, okay? So everyone gets at least one chance at doing it um, three or four times. If you overshoot one, that's fine. Uh, you'll clean and rinse your your flask, and then you can redo it. And the goal is to get as low, as little as pink as you possibly can in here. Okay. Now, let's, for just fun purposes, I'm going to add a little acid in to get the, the clear back. Okay, so we're no longer quantifying anything, but I want to show you that really close endpoint, if I can hit it. Notice I'm going drop by drop now. And you always want to swirl. And it is kind of a one-man job because you kind of swirl and turn the... Ooh, better slow down. Now I have a drop hanging, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the side of the flask. Let that drop actually fall in. I hope it wasn't enough to... So I got another drop hanging. I can actually touch the side of the flask again. That one in. So you can actually do that. You actually can watch it get a drop hanging off the end. Oops. So really close. Nope, I do have one hanging here too, so we'll put that one in. So there we go. Okay. Just barely has a tint. It actually went completely away, so I probably want to put one more drop in. Let's go real quick. Science. See how there's a drop hanging from the tip? Right there? So I'm just going to touch the side of the flask. 
Let that one drop go in. So it doesn't take much, okay? It doesn't take much at all to, for a change. That's why phenothalin is such a great indicator because it instantly changes on you and it's really obvious because it went from clear to this. So we're right at that seven to eight border right now in terms of that. So, yeah. And that's about as good as you can get, okay? Tomorrow, will we have groups who get something that is lighter than this? Yeah, you bet. Okay, here's something you can't do. I can sit here and swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl. If I'm really close to the end point, by just swirling it a ton, I might get the paint to go away. Okay, because I'm adding oxygen into this and I'm actually changing the, the there's another reaction going on there with um, carbon dioxide gas and oxygen and that kind of stuff that creates another base. So you don't want to do that because then you're artificially changing it. So swirl it really well like I'm doing right now. This is obviously not leaving, right? Okay, so that is perfect okay, in terms of what we have. It's the very last drop I put in turned it. We have our color is just barely pink here, and we know we're at our end point. So if I had done that volumetrically, now I take my final reading, and we can do the math on it. Okay. When you're all done, clean and rinse this. They talked about rinsing off the tip of this. You don't need to do that. I mean, they do that just because any little residue that might be sitting down here you want into your flask, but we won't do that in our actual uh, experiments. We'll just kind of let it go as this. And then you can do another trial, okay? If you ever need to refill a burette, okay, um, you have to be careful with that. It's only 50 milliliters, okay? So it's only twice this. So what happens a lot of times is people start to pour and refill these things, and they over pour them because they don't realize how little volume is really inside of here. Okay, it's very little volume that's inside of here. So we always use a funnel. When you do fill these. And then I also ask if you're going to fill them, take them out of their stands and then move them over and do it like this. Okay, I don't know if this is, the camera's going to catch me now or not, but um, when you're filling the burette with your base, bring it down so it's comfortable. Don't be reaching way up like this trying to, to refill these things if you have to refill those. So, okay. Questions for me on the titration process, how you do it, what you're working on. That kind of stuff at all. Okay? All right, we're going to do the calculations now based off of what we just did and walk through that.